Where does it all go? You just push the lever and it's gone. It's not magic, but it is pretty weird that everything disappears. How does it all work? Can anything go down there? Are there even any rules? And is the sink any different? The bathroom sink, the kitchen sink? Actually, there is no difference. Sink, toilet, same thing. Behind these walls and under these floors, all the drains meet up in a single pipe and head toward the sewers. Take a look at this. No, not that. This. What happens down here is pretty cool. Everything that leaves the house through the main drain pipe meets up with the sewer, right down here. In some places, it's a combined sewer, both wastewater and stormwater. In other words, everything from inside your house and everything from outside your house, rain, whatever, goes into a single combined sewer. All of it heads towards the wastewater treatment plant. In some places, the sewers are separated, one for wastewater and the other for stormwater. In that case, only the wastewater heads towards the wastewater treatment plant. The storm sewer goes straight to the Detroit River, untreated, because it's only water, right? Actually, no, it isn't. All the chemicals that you put on your lawn or the soap with all the phosphates that you wash your car with all head out in the storm sewer if you've got a separated system. Straight into the Detroit River. Some people hook up their downspouts to their main drain so that they can keep water away from their home. The problem is, when you add all that rainwater to the dedicated wastewater sewer line, it can overload the system, and during a heavy rainfall, homes can be flooded. And a portion of the wastewater will have to bypass the wastewater treatment plant because it's overloaded and head straight into the Detroit River. Instead, you can just disconnect your downspout and add a rain barrel. Simple as that. But simply adding a rain barrel isn't enough to protect the system. Let's hear from the experts about some of the other things we should think about. People put things down the sewer that aren't supposed to be there, for example, oil and grease. You pour it down your sink and it's liquid. With hot water, you think, it's fine. It's got to go somewhere and it solidifies. Sewers can get plugged up, which could lead to basement flooding of your own residence or a neighbor's residence. Your toilet or your sink is not a garbage can. Municipal wastewater treatment plants were never designed to treat chemicals that could be in your pharmaceuticals or your personal care products. Paints, oils, solvents should be in containers and disposed of separately, not down the sink or the toilet. Pharmaceuticals can go back to the pharmacy. Flushable wipes for children, for example. Physically, they are flushable, but they're not in the water long enough to actually degrade, and they do clog the pipes. Sanitary napkins and tampons women flush down the toilet thinking that's fine, that's what they've always done. But those do clog the sewer systems and cause issues elsewhere. Products like that it should be in the garbage. Food waste, composting or the garbage is the better way of dealing with items like that. So to sum it up, a storm sewer is not a garbage can. Only rain goes into the storm sewer, nothing else. If you pour your bacon grease or cooking oil or anything like that down the sink, it'll most likely end up clogging the sewers on your street because oil and grease become solid quickly. You should let grease cool down, put it in an empty container, and throw it in the trash. Or even better, take it to the Essex-Windsor Solid Waste Authority's public drop-off depot at Central Avenue and EC Row. And speaking of which, that's the same place you should bring motor oil, unused paints, and things like that. Don't dump them in the sewers. The toilet and sink are no place for unused pharmaceuticals. And look for the Eco logo on cleaning and personal care products. If you flush things that shouldn't be flushed, wipes, feminine products, those kind of things, they'll clog sewers. Even if they say flushable, they're not. And when the sewer is blocked, people's homes flood because wastewater has nowhere to go but back up to the house. So, let's heed the experts' advice. We need to think before we clog the sewers, misuse the wastewater treatment plant, or harm the Detroit River. Oh, and speaking of the wastewater treatment plant, I think it's time we take a look and see what goes on down there. All the wastewater from the city of Windsor ends up at one of two wastewater treatment plants. The Little River plant, or in this case, the Lou Romano plant. The purpose of each of these plants is to remove all solids and pathogens, you know, microorganisms like bacteria and stuff, from the wastewater so when it gets reintroduced to the Detroit River, it's cleaner than when it arrived at the wastewater treatment plant. When it arrives, coarse screens remove large solids, rags, and debris from wastewater and are immediately disposed of. It's here that you see some of the most ridiculous things people have put down their toilets, drains, and sewers. At least this stuff made it this far. 
Some things that the water can't dissolve end up stuck in the sewers, leading to sewers being clogged and homes being flooded. After this, fine screens are used to remove the smaller material in the same way. Next up is grit removal. Grit includes sand, gravel, and other heavy solid materials that are heavier than the organic solids in the wastewater. Removal of grit happens by getting the wastewater to flow in a spiral pattern. Heavier particles settle at the bottom of the tank while lighter organic particles are suspended and eventually carried out of the tank. From there, that water is sent into a settling basin. This is where suspended solids settle out and floating scum is removed by skimmers. Scrapers in the tank move continuously along the bottom to deposit the raw sludge into hoppers, which is sent to a nearby plant where it's made into pellets for fertilizer. After the settling basins, the wastewater is sent to the next step by an Archimedes screw pump, which forces the liquid upwards. The revolutions raise the water thread by thread until it comes out at the top of the cylinder. There, it is met by the fine curve screen, where small items that have made it through the initial screening process are removed. Things like fruit and vegetable stickers. They don't dissolve and they clog up the system. So when you're peeling them off, throw them in the garbage, not down the sink. Now it's time to get the stuff you can't see. Some of this work is done by biological aerated filters. Essentially what happens here is that good microorganisms attached to porous rock eat up the bad microorganisms. The wastewater is pumped up through the rocks and the bacteria in the water sticks to the rocks. Bubbles are pumped in to keep the good bacteria alive and working. The clean water goes up and the rocks with the bad bacteria attached to them go back down. This cleansed water then flows into a channel on its way to be treated by ultraviolet light. The water passes high output UV lamps where light disrupts the molecular structure of DNA molecules in the microorganisms. This renders the cells unable to replicate before they die. The disinfection stage takes seconds, eliminates the need for chlorine and makes the final process much safer. At the wastewater treatment plants, more than 90% of the pollutants are removed from the city of Windsor's wastewater before the water is returned to the Detroit River. And that's important because the Detroit River and the surrounding lakes are our primary source of drinking water and so much more. People cannot live without water. We need water for agriculture, we need water for hygiene, we need water for recreational aspects, we need water for drinking, and we have no substitute for water. It's too easy just to try to pass the blame to somebody else. We're all sharing the same resource and we all have the same responsibility. Right now the Detroit River is still considered an area of concern under the Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement. We have to care and protect for the resource that, that we're using and that we're leaving behind for our generations as well. So let's recap. Wastewater leaves your house, gets treated at the wastewater treatment plant, and returns here, the Detroit River, the same place your drinking water comes from. And what does this all mean? For the past eight minutes, we've shown you how our wastewater treatment system works. We've told you why it's important to pay attention to what you put down sinks, toilets, and sewers. But if your mind's been floating elsewhere, here's what you absolutely positively need to know. two, and TP. That's it. That's all that goes down there. Oh, and TP? It means toilet paper. Oh yeah, and this? Soap and water. That's it.